Hey, welcome back to the last video in the Lino Cut printmaking series. So we're gonna do a couple different things in today's video. The first thing is we're gonna make another print using some mixed media. So we're using a different paper and we're gonna use some copper paint and we'll go through creating this print. And after that, I'll talk about a couple of resources you can look into for more information about printmaking, some good book recommendations and things like that. And if going through these videos, you found you really like lino cut printmaking and you haven't tried woodcut, you really should try some woodcut printmaking as well. You can buy these sheets of this like Sheena plywood and it carves almost like linoleum. It's like, it's kind of a softer wood and it's really easy to work with. And there's all sorts of different like woodcut mediums you can work in. So let's jump right into putting together this last print. So in addition to the grain for the plants, I wanna do something with the pot. And I could carve another block and go through the same process, but I think I'm gonna do a couple prints using watercolor. And then I'm gonna use this Inca Gold and it's like a gloss metallic paint. And it dries really quick, so you can't, you know, I'd like to use this as an ink and you know, ink up a block with it and print it, but it dries almost instantly. So instead I'm gonna have to paint it on the paper before I print. So to do that, I'm gonna have to make some kind of stencil that I can lay down on my paper so I know where I need to put the paint. So I did a test using just paper and it works okay, but the paper's not gonna hold up to, you know, a bunch of different prints. So I'm gonna use this Duralar and it's this clear overlay film. And so hopefully I'll be able to cut out the shape I need out of this piece and then I can use it as a, a stencil so I know where to apply the ink. So this print's already printed off of the registration jig so the image is in the right spot. So I should be able to just line it up on this paper, cut out my shape and be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I need to make sure I line it up exactly on the paper. So that way when I do all my prints, you know, using this, this stencil, everything works out. And I really wanna hold this down so it doesn't, doesn't slide around when I'm cutting it. So there's only really two parts that I need to cut out of this. The main pot here, and then this little back piece of the pot here. So I'm just gonna use a very sharp, brand new X-Acto blade. And you wanna use a really sharp one when cutting this, so you get a nice clean cut. I wanna make sure that the pot that's gonna be printed with this copper falls underneath this black line. So that way, if it's not perfectly registered, the black will cover up that edge. All right, there's one piece. So now when I wanna print this print, all I have to do is I'll have my second block to print the, the green, you know, for the, the two plants. But first I'll need to put down this copper paint. And if I line this up right on the paper, I have a nice stencil here that I can, you know, hold this down and get a nice clean print of or, you know, paint in that, that copper. So that's what I'm gonna go do next, is put the uh, put this copper paint on, on all the sheets of paper. Now I'm gonna print this paper, which I have the copper that we did in the previous step. And I'm gonna use the same block we we're using for the white paper with the green and go ahead and print that on here. There's not enough ink down it. It really won't make a nice print. It will be kind of blotchy and it's not look great. The brown paper I'm using is a little bit thicker. So I wanna make sure there's enough ink down. Otherwise that brown paper is gonna show right through. All right, let's get this inked up. If I had a larger brayer, I could put rails on the side of this block and just do one nice pass across it. But since I'm stuck with just this small brayer for now, I kind of have to make do. But so far it's, it's worked out okay. So here's our block inked up. Now I can set it up here in the registration jig, just like before. Make sure it's locked in. All right, moment of truth. For this paper, I actually cut hard edges with an X-Acto blade. So hopefully it'll register very accurately, but no way to know for sure. I can feed it through the press. Hopefully it all lines up. I think it came out okay. Now I'll just do four more. So I let this second layer dry for a couple days, just so everything's really, you know, drying on the paper and isn't gonna smudge when I print the next layer. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and print the same block we used on the, the main print and print it on top of this and hopefully everything lines up and it turns out good. I'm gonna be using the same ink as well. So it's the, the black ink with a bit of blue mixed in. I'm gonna ink it pretty liberally so that way it, that brown paper is pretty stiff. So I wanna make sure that it gets a nice, nice layer of ink. And I go across multiple directions to make sure it all has a nice coat. And then I'll come back afterwards and do a nice pass across the whole thing. Just to smooth it out, there's no, no lines from my brayer. So now I can roll out my press bed here. And everything should still be set up how it was before for the, the cream paper. So I can just line it up right in the registration jig here. This paper is thicker than the cream paper, so I had to lighten the pressure on the press just a little bit. I can put down my cutting mat here to smooth out that roller and run my print. All right, there it is. Everything is lined up nicely within the, the copper, you know, nothing's really overlapping. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. All right, and here's the final edition of the four prints with the copper background. So I numbered, you know, titled and signed them all. And I think they all turned out really good. I'm really happy to have the variation. So I'm just gonna go through a couple of my kind of favorite resources. Now obviously the internet has lots of information and make sure to check out the other videos I have posted as well. But this is a book I recently checked out from the library and it's Printmaking by Beth Grabowski and Bill Fick. who are both amazing printmakers. And this book really covers everything. It goes through every printmaking process basically and all the steps and all the information you really ever need. It has a whole lot of information about, you know, relief printmaking and wood cuts and lino cuts. So this is a great resource. You know, it's really well illustrated, lots of, lots of, you know, progress shots and people making prints in it. So I definitely recommend checking this one out. So it's Printmaking by Beth Grabowski and Bill Fick. Next up is this book, Printmaking by Paterdi. And I don't know if you can get this book anymore. I think I found it in a vintage store. It's from the 60s. But I'd recommend you know, looking in vintage stores or even the library for checking out older books. Because a lot of times you'll find resources and tips and tricks that you know they're kind of lost in these older books. You know, this one has a good section on sharpening tools, which is kind of a really important thing to know. And sometimes you get really lucky. Like at the library I went to, they had this Methods of Printing and Etching. And this book, it's very old, it's 1897, and the prints in it, so instead of, you know, it's, it's an old book, these are actual prints. So this is an actual mezzotint print printed right on this paper. You know, and I've learned lots of tips and tricks out of this book that I've never read anywhere else. You know, so yeah, there's all sorts of prints that are just printed right into this. And it goes through all the kind of different printmaking techniques of the time. So definitely check out, you know, older books and check out the library. You know, I have another etching and engraving book. You know, and this has lots of, lots of more information. And a lot of these books you'll find kind of similar information, but different, different takes on it. And you know, there's only so many ways to do things, but if you read enough different ways, you kind of, you'll find your favorite or pick up a tip or trick that you like. And then if you're into intaglio printmaking or mezzotint, which is the other thing that I really enjoy doing, this book is a kind of a must have. It's the mezzotint by Carol Wax. And if you're ever interested in mezzotint, this would be the, the book to start with. You know, it goes through the history and then it goes through step by step how to how to sharpen tools, how to make a mezzotint ground, just the whole process. So there's some other videos I have posted about mezzotint if you're curious about what those look like. So that's just a small sampling. I have a whole library of these books that I, I look through. And if you found a book that's you know your favorite, make sure to leave it down in the comments to this video. I love to see what you're reading and pick up some new books to look through. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video series. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the questions and I'll be happy to answer. And make sure if you do make a print to you know, tweet it at me, I'd love to see what you end up making. And so hopefully from this series, you can see just by the two blocks that we, you know, we carved up, you know, I made this print with uh, the copper on the tan paper. We have just the print with the black key block and then the, the green rainbow roll. And then also this final print with the watercolor added to it. 
So there's really like a lot of options. Once you have the blocks, you can reuse them in different orders, put them on, you know, combine blocks from other projects. So it's kind of endless possibilities. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the videos when they're posted, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the Diode Press Patreon page, where I post behind the scenes photos, as well as other patron rewards. Thanks!